The Colosseum update added three new arena locations for Gladiator-style PvP matches in Limgrave, Kaelid, and Lendel. There's United Combat, Combat Ordeal, and Dual Mode, two to six players, and boy oh boy, you wouldn't believe some of the fights we see in here. What the? I'm in here with Kratos and Hades. So with that being said, let's take a look at the best clips sent in from the community, starting at number 10. What's more fun than a hyper-specialized dual greatsword strength build? Two of them, of course. Omega A Studios sent me this edit, and with the clanging sound effects, it made me laugh. It's so pure and wholesome when two strength builds collide with no restraint and zero brain cells. They for sure died happy. You can just tell. Number 9 is a 6 player free for all with this bizarre monstrosity. I feel like I can say that because this guy said himself people were distracted by his appearance. One of his opponents uses the prattling pate item, which says, you're beautiful. So clearly the distraction is working. What we really need to pay attention to, however, is the sorcery he's using called Fear's Mist, which creates a deadly spray inflicting the death blight status. Death blight is a scary effect that results in gruesome death but this player has figured out a way to make it even worse. As you can see, there's a glitch where the backstab animation cancels out the death blight animation. Temporarily, that is, because it still continues afterwards. The only thing this is doing is delaying the inevitable horrible death and turning it into a never-ending loop. The funniest part of all this is how entertained all the other combatants are. Ironically, this twisted attraction has brought peace into the Colosseum. The six-player free-for-all mode has a time limit of five minutes, so thankfully these poor souls aren't tortured for eternity. Darkness enters the arena into a four-player brawl, and unlike the more refined and potentially honourable duels, these free-for-alls are much more chaotic, and since the aim is to be the player with the most eliminations before the timer runs out, a common winning strategy is to skillfully pick off low-health targets when they're distracted. The Bolt of Grand Sax is the spear being used here, and its ancient lightning spear skill is incredible at taking down targets at long range. Darkness was the kill leader throughout the majority of the match, but loses his crown with less than 30 seconds to go. 20 seconds left and Darkness equalises, but time's almost up. In literally the last second of the match, he fires off an ancient lightning spear across the entire map, which lands just before the vengeful spirits from his opponent's ancient death rancor sorcery. That's the beauty of these brawls. The mayhem creates a unique intensity. Number 7 features the ending of a 1v1 duel with Mr. Lucy, It's actually very rare to see stalemates in Colosseum duels. 
Mr. Lucy on his level 150, wielding a lightning-infused troll sword with the giant hunt Ash of War, thrusts his opponent into the air, his opponent doing the same thing with the aspects of the Crucible, Horns, incantation. We have another four-player free-for-all with Color Green using the Cranial Vessel Candle Stand. This unique Great Hammer has a skill called Surge of Faith, which generates an explosion and then a subsequent rain of fireballs. And in this instance, it nets him a clean triple kill. At number five, we have Murky the Clown. And he is a murderous clown, but he specialized. One thing clowns are known for, I guess, is funny noises. And so he has a collection of envoy horns. Now, a mechanic unique to the Kalid Colosseum is the ability to summon Spirit Ashes, and Murky the Clown chooses to summon a squad of Oracle Envoys who also blow tuneful horns. Thus, we see this clown's true strategy come together. Death by Bubbles. The Envoy's Longhorn has a special skill called Bubble Shower, and the Envoy's Great Horn has the Great Oracular Bubble that can be free aimed. So that's a way you can die apparently. Death by Bubble Bath. But I love a build with a good theme, and blowing bubbles with the boys looks like a great time. He Who Slaps Himself is part of a four-player free-for-all, and what often happens in these settings is you have two separate 1v1s. But this normal behavior can be taken advantage of. Triple kill. This truly showcases the power of mind games. His opponent would never expect him to cast Rani's Dark Moon and retarget it, and then when he predictably runs in to punish, it's countered with a reverse Carrion Piercer. V Hypercane is starting up a 1v1 duel, looking very blue. He's running an S stock with the Glintstone Pebble Ash of War, so he has a range option. And then he has the Knight Rider Glaive with Chilling Mist. He breaks to cure the Frostbite, apply a buff, and switches Talisman to the Blessed Dew Talisman to gradually regain some health points. Triple Rings of Light are excellent at controlling space and zoning other players. His opponent uses it very well here to chip down Hypercane's health and keep him at bay. It's obviously very one-sided at this point, and his opponent is doing quite well not to overextend and give up his advantage. However, that's the beauty of Elden Ring PvP. Everything can change in the blink of an eye. What a way to end that match. That's the best roll catch with a great bow I've seen, and in a dual setting as well, with no distractions. The jump helped to hide the draw animation from the golden great bow a little bit, and then that zoomed in leading shot did the rest. A perfect fight in Elden Ring is often referred to as a fight where you take no damage and get the win and Fergus MacLiam has the skill to pull that off. That was so extremely clean, it could be used in a tutorial. A jump attack into a brutal chain of backstep roll catches. This is why panic rolling is such a dangerous instinct in PvP. It's a very hard thing to unlearn. 
This backstep move is a PvP technique that I learned recently in my Elden Ring skills video, so if you want to understand more about that advanced backstep move, this video explains it in more detail. Artema Godhand closes out this week at number 1 with one of the most satisfying clips I've ever seen. His entire build was designed for one specific thing, and when the right situation arises, it does the thing shockingly well. When do you ever hear a silent arena during a six-player free-for-all? It's so peculiar. Five players almost instantaneously vaporized, and for a strange moment, Artema has the arena to himself. So his whole playthrough before this point was focused around getting Ancient Dragon Lightning Strike early, before Margit, and then hyper-tuning it to one-shot big bosses. Clearly in free-for-all, it turns into a complete RNG death machine, even uncharged. Thank you to everyone who submitted for this episode. I love the Colosseums, and hopefully this encourages newcomers to try them out. Maybe head in with a friend. In terms of the top 10 series, I'm going to put it on pause and focus on other content just for the moment. I've been uploading a new series as well as trying out new concepts, and I think a temporary pause with the top 10s will allow me to experiment and come up with some fresh ideas. I'll restart the top 10s either when I have a perfect topic idea, so if you have suggestions, send them my way, or of course when the Elden Ring DLC is released. But for now, keep an eye out for some new stuff coming your way. Thanks for watching, see you next time.